So in 1939, the world is in a desperate situation. The Nazis are on the move. They seem unstoppable. The Germans attacked Poland, Netherlands, Belgium, and the French. They were ruthless. They demonstrated their ruthlessness. They seem capable and willing to execute a war of total domination. And the United States is watching very carefully what's happening. They understood what Hitler was capable of doing. So right about this time, you have the advancement of nuclear science and physics. Everybody is on the cusp of controlling uh, nuclear energy. Several German physicists actually first demonstrated the ability to split the atom. People like Albert Einstein, people like Enrico Fermi, Leo Szilard, realized right away the potential of what that discovery could mean. Suddenly, Germany stops the export of Czechoslovakian uranium, which makes scientists in the United States and the rest of Europe very nervous about what Germany's up to. The scientists convinced Einstein to write the letter to FDR. Warning him that if the Germans were able to develop that discovery, it could actually lead to building one of the most powerful bombs ever built. FDR's response to the letter was remarkably uh, prompt. Funding begins to be put into nuclear research. The world's greatest scientists are fleeing Europe, and they're coming to the United States for safety. And then as the Manhattan Project becomes established, they come to the University of Chicago and they begin to build the pile under Stag Field. There was a squash court. It was a heady environment. You had the world's best physicists about to unleash nuclear power. They're also thinking about the implications of what it will mean being used for the destruction of humanity and not for peaceful purposes. The pace was fast. They were working against the Germans. They literally believed it was hour by hour, day by day. They might be behind. They didn't work 40 hour weeks. They worked two 12-hour shifts every day. This was going on 24-7 for two weeks. They understood what was at stake. They understood that civilization in the Western world was at stake. The first step was to acquire the materials. Fermi begins to understand that if they build a reactor with very pure graphite, they will get the reaction that they're looking for. The amount was huge, 45,000 bricks, each brick weighing almost 20 pounds. They're stacking these graphite blocks that are incredibly heavy. They've got day laborers who are helping them with it. They were using uranium. The uranium came in two forms, uh, one metallic uranium and the other uranium oxide. This was the cutting edge, the bleeding edge of science and it was happening here. What is really quite amazing is the short duration during which the pile was actually assembled. It was a matter of days where they built that reactor. 15 days, specifically. The group felt the weight of the country, if not the world, on their shoulders. The politicians, FDR included, really did not understand the, the nature of the beast that they were funding. Those in the room understood that they were on the cusp of a revolutionary change in energy. They had just finished building Chicago Pile 1 the day before, literally December 1st, 1942, and Enrico Fermi declared next morning they would start the actual experiment. On December 2nd, 1942, Fermi and his team were able to control and sustain a nuclear chain reaction. A monumental physics achievement. It would not be too much to say this was almost as important as the discovery of fire. It actually wasn't clear what it meant. They didn't know if they'd be able to weaponize it. And they didn't know if the Germans had already weaponized it. But the fact that they could control the chain reaction meant it was possible. Arthur Holly Compton really drove it as the lead scientist. He didn't do it alone. He did it with dozens and dozens of scientists. And they built, as Einstein would say, on the shoulders of giants. It was really, in many ways, the first time big science was done. And these big efforts are both exciting and dangerous. They have enormous implications for good and for evil. And it's really up to us to figure out how to manage the risks so that we can reap the benefits.